Donald Trump is held in contempt of court. The UN Secretary General meets with Putin, and Elon Musk buys Twitter. And more on this week's headlines. America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Trade. If you love coffee as much as I do, you need to check this out. Trade matches your taste preferences with top quality craft coffee roasters. These are small businesses that pay farmers fair prices for sustainably sourced coffee. Trade coffee is excellent. I'll tell you a little more at the end. But Donald Trump was held in contempt of court this week for not presenting documents in a civil case investigating his company's financial dealings before taking office. Trump was ordered to pay $10,000 a day until he turns over the documents. And that sounds bad until you realize that Donald Trump's net worth is estimated at $3 billion, which means he can afford to pay this fine every day for the next 821 years. $10,000 is nothing to Trump probably spends more than that every day on hairspray and tan in a can. The Biden administration announced it would be closing part of the National Petroleum Reserve in Alaska to oil and gas drilling. Under President Trump, 18 million acres of the reserve were open for drilling. With this announcement, now it's only 12 million. This is being done in a conservation effort because more expensive gasoline and dependence on foreign oil are prices worth paying to preserve the natural beauty of Alaska? Just look at it. This is an actual photo of most of Alaska. Breathtaking, isn't it? A federal judge issued a temporary order blocking the Biden administration from lifting Title 42, which was set to end on May 23rd. Title 42 is a Trump-era immigration policy started during the COVID pandemic. It allows the government to quickly expel illegal immigrants, including asylum seekers, at the border. This law is historic, mostly because it's the only COVID restriction Republicans are actually in favor of. The decision to lift Title 42 came from the CDC. Essentially, the CDC is saying that migrants can once again enter the U.S. because COVID isn't much of a concern. Of course, this is the same CDC that was upset last week when a different federal judge repealed the federal mask mandate for traveling because they said COVID is still a concern. But it's not really fair to compare those two stories. After all, one involves large groups of people traveling together in the U.S., while the other involves large groups of people traveling together in the U.S. You see, it's completely different. COVID is still a concern, except when it isn't. More after the break. Welcome back. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin told reporters that the U.S. government's goal in the Ukraine-Russia conflict is to see Ukraine remain a sovereign democratic country. Austin also said, we want to see Russia weakened to the degree that it can't do the kinds of things that it has done in invading Ukraine. The defense secretary wants to see one of America's biggest rivals weakened? What a brilliant strategy. That's like saying, I want the guy I'm facing in a fencing match to be unarmed. And I don't mean I want him to be empty-handed. I literally don't want him to have any arms. I think I'm ready to become Secretary of Defense. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres met with Russian President Vladimir Putin and his comically long table on Tuesday to discuss what can be done to bring peace to the region. And on Thursday, he met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky for the same reason. Guterres himself had said there wasn't much hope for a peaceful resolution even before a meeting with Putin. So if he didn't have much hope, then why did he go meet with these leaders? Obviously because he wanted to exhaust every avenue for peace. And more importantly, he wanted a free lunch, especially in Moscow. I hear their tea is to die for. Russia warned the U.S. to stop sending weapons to Ukraine. Russia's ambassador to the U.S. said what the Americans are doing is pouring oil on the flames. I see only an attempt to raise the stakes, to aggravate the situation, to see more losses. Yeah, Russian losses. That's kind of the point of sending weapons. Although I do agree with him that we should stop pouring oil on fires. Mostly because it's a complete waste, what with recent oil prices. It seems like Russia is throwing anything at the wall and seeing what sticks. Their latest gamble is accusing Ukraine and the CIA 
of plotting to kill Russian journalists connected to state-run media. I can understand why Putin would be upset about that. Because killing Russian journalists is his job. Speaking of dead Russians, two Russian oligarchs and their families were found dead within 48 hours of each other. These were both deemed murder-suicides. And if you're thinking that sounds a little fishy, this makes six Russian oligarchs who have died by what investigators are calling either suicides or murder-suicides since the start of the Ukraine invasion. Perhaps seeing their fortunes and lavish lifestyles crumble around them as a result of all the sanctions the West has been putting on Russia caused them to snap. Or perhaps they tried to get Putin to end the Ukraine invasion and they were dealt with. Or as Putin might say, this was the work of Ukraine and the CIA. And after the break, Elon Musk buys Twitter. Welcome back. Twitter agreed to let Elon Musk buy the company for $44 billion, valuing the social media giant at $54.20 a share. Musk doesn't officially own Twitter yet, the deal isn't finalized. There is a chance it could fall through. Especially since one of the provisions of the deal is that Musk is allowed to tweet about the deal, so long as tweets do not disparage Twitter or any of its representatives. And Musk criticized a Twitter executive calling their censorship of the Hunter Biden laptop story incredibly inappropriate, which for Musk is pretty tame. This buyout would automatically make Twitter a private company, and Musk said he plans on keeping it that way, which is shocking. If Twitter wasn't already a private company, their digital dumpster fire of a platform is what they came up with to make shareholders happy? I'm surprised each share of Twitter wasn't valued at a body pillow and a Prozac, since that's what you need to self-medicate and recover after spending any amount of time on Twitter. But when Twitter goes private, Musk can do just about whatever he wants with it. Just keep with his brand, I say Musk should rename Twitter to MySpaceX. So what is Musk going to do with Twitter? In a statement he said, I want to make Twitter better than ever by enhancing the product with new features, making the algorithms open source to increase trust, defeating the spam bots, and authenticating all humans. Twitter has tremendous potential. I look forward to working with the company and the community of users to unlock it. Making Twitter better than ever. That's a low bar. Although his promise to authenticate all humans is a great idea. Because at the very least, this will prevent Mark Zuckerberg from ever using it. Many people were upset to learn Twitter will now be run by a billionaire, you know, as opposed to when it was run by a different billionaire. Several Twitter users and many celebrities threatened to leave Twitter. Thousands of people might quit a social media platform? Wow, Elon Musk buying Twitter might turn out to be the greatest aid to mental health of all time. So why did Musk buy Twitter? Musk describes himself as a free speech absolutist. In a statement, Musk also said, free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy, and Twitter is the digital town square where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated. The best thing about Twitter is that everyone has a voice. However, the worst thing about Twitter is that everyone has a voice, especially people with anime avatars. Many fear that Musk would silence his critics now that he owned the platform, but Musk tweeted that he hopes even his worst critics remain on Twitter which is redundant since Twitter is a site exclusively used by the world's worst critics. Twitter is basically one giant dissatisfied Yelp review of reality. Everyone here sucks one star. Also, wishing someone would remain on Twitter is actually the meanest thing you can wish upon another human being. Musk said for Twitter to deserve public trust, it must be politically neutral, which effectively means upsetting the far right and the far left equally. He wants to upset the far left and far right equally? Then let me be the first to congratulate new Twitter head of content development, Joe Biden. Human rights groups express concern about hate speech on Twitter after Musk takes charge. The director of technology and human rights at Amnesty International USA said, the last thing we need is a Twitter that willfully turns a blind eye to violent and abusive speech against users, particularly those most disproportionately impacted including women, non-binary persons, and others. A Twitter that turns a blind eye to abusive speech? That would be terrible. That would be catastrophic. That would be exactly how Twitter has been since it started. That statement could have just ended after, the last thing we need is a Twitter. One of the biggest questions coming out of Musk buying Twitter is whether or not Musk would allow former President Donald Trump to rejoin the platform. But Trump says he won't rejoin 
and will instead focus on his own social media platform, Truth Social. I'm not going on Twitter. I'm going to stay on Truth. I hope Elon buys Twitter because he'll make improvements to it, and he's a good man, but I'm going to be staying on Truth. I can't blame Trump for not wanting to go back to Twitter, and I can't blame him for wanting to stick with his own platform. He put a lot of money into it, almost as much as he spends every year on hairspray and tan in a can. And this episode is sponsored by Trade. I've been using Trade to buy coffee for about two years, so I was thrilled when they reached out to see if they could sponsor us. I'm a big coffee drinker, but I don't like to drink just any coffee. I like coffee that actually tastes good because I drink it black. And Trade Coffee lets me select the kind of flavors and aromas I like. Personally, I prefer lighter roasts with fruitier notes. Trade lets you customize your flavor profile, grind, roast preference, how adventurous you want to be with trying new flavors, and even your brewing method. And they'll send you a new coffee anywhere from once a week to once every six weeks. I'm a once a week kind of guy. If you really like one type of coffee, you can order it again, but otherwise, Trade will send you something entirely new every time. I've been using it for two years, and I don't think I've ever gotten the same coffee twice. So check it out with me. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order, plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com uncovered, or click the link in the description below. It's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash uncovered and let Trade find you a coffee you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash uncovered for $30 off. And let us know in the comments below what kind of coffee you get from Trade once you tried it. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.